Okay, let's get started. This is the crit for Outline. Overall, uh, Outline is really good. It's very fast. It works. Pretty intuitive. I came away with three points. It's more like 2.5 points uh, where I think there's the most room for improvement. So the first is in the permissions flow, which I'll walk through. The second is improving visual signifiers, key lines, and just making it clear what the target is for discrete or nested actions. And the last is just the dialogue system uh, or modals, as some people call them. Uh, how can we make those more clear and useful? Uh, I've got a Figma file I'm going to walk through with a bunch of comments and some small visual redesigns. Uh, and the rest of the document has some bugs with repro steps, a lot of notes on interaction design. Um, this is where I actually found most of the room for improvement, just on like the, the nitpicking side of things. A couple points on uh, accessibility, visuals, and some miscellaneous product feedback. So let's get started. I want to first spend time talking about the permissions flow, because this is really the only point in the app where I actually got confused and wasn't sure what was happening. So, you know, perhaps this is the thing that we should spend more time on together in the future. Let me just try and walk through and capture where I was confused in that flow. And hopefully just the articulation of why it's confusing will at least maybe prompt some ideas for resolution. So I'm going to create a new collection. We'll go ahead and call this test collection. Hit create. And the first thing I'm going to do is start managing permissions. Who has access to this collection? So here's the first problem. One is I'm already taken out of context of my collection. We have this full screen dialogue uh, visual style, which is actually kind of my, my other point in the, the Notion document. But okay, we're m editing permissions in sort of this full screen view. And here's where it gets tricky. I wanna add groups or I wanna add people. But it's weird because I've already created groups and I've already added people to my organization, but they don't show up here. Instead, what happens is you have to go to a separate screen to search for people or groups. So let's add a group. Here you can see my existing group that I've already created. And I could add that here. Maybe I'll do that in a second, but I just wanna show you one more thing. So let's say I wanted to create a new group. I create a new group and I just wanna call it right now, I'm actually pretty lost in the application. What's happening is these dialogues are stacking but I've totally lost my point of view on where I am, what stage in the flow I'm at, what's gonna happen when I hit back. So that's the first problem. The next problem is, let's just keep going forward. We're gonna create a group. We'll call this test group, continue. All right, now we add people. But again, I've already added people to my organization. They just don't show up here. So let's add people. Ah, here they are. Now this is the second weird thing. When you add people, they disappear. And this to me is the, I think the crux of why this flow is confusing. Not only am I like building up this stack of dialogues that don't retain context about their previous dialogues, but adding things causes them to disappear from the screen. It's just a weird interaction. So then I go back to see the consequence of the add buttons I just clicked. Then I go back to see the group and then I click add on the group. It disappears, I go back and now I'm back to my root permissions screen. I think what we wanna do is invert this whole thing. I, there's gotta be a way to add groups and see them appear here and add people to a group and, and, and have them appear on the screen and not disappear from the screen when you click add. Okay, so that is uh, the permissions and also my point on the dialogues. A couple other examples of dialogues that pay, take you out of context and sort of break spatial awareness uh, are when you're deleting things. Um, what's a good example? Let's go to a document here and we wanna delete the document. This delete dialogue takes over the whole screen, but what's actually more useful is if this delete dialogue was a little bit constrained and I could sort of peek through you know, a semi-transparent scrim to the document itself, reinforcing what I'm gonna be deleting. It's not really enough to just bold the title here. I think reinforcing this destructive action with the contents behind it that are gonna be destroyed would be a better pattern. Um, so a lot of, I, I think I noted like deleting, moving, and then the permissions flows could benefit from a different dialogue visual style. Okay. Let's spend the rest of our time talking about visual signifiers, key lines, and targets for discrete actions. This is where um, you know the original crit was meant to spend the most time, was just talking about visuals. So I, I tried to honor that here. 
but it's really hard. You have a fairly complex application, uh, at least with just a lot of hierarchy, a lot of collapsing and expanding elements. So the first thing that I want to point out is just how do we signify when nested elements are going to do different things or have their own click target. So I think a really obvious example is I can click on this document right here and the whole bound uh, row gets a background color. That's kind of communicating to me that this is an entire clickable element. But what's actually surprising is you can click on this triangle and it is its own action to collapse and expand. So clicking here does something, clicking here does something. They both share the same bounding box, but this doesn't feel like a discrete action. Maybe just as a point of comparison, we could look at Notion and notice that yes, I've hovered over this row, but when I hover over a sub action, it gets its own little visual signifier that it's alone on its own interactive. So that's one area. Um, another area might be on the, this history um, for a document. I'm just trying to point out some random examples, but I found this to be the case in a lot of places in the app. But here's an example. So you hover over a row and this dot, dot, dot icon lights up. That is confusing to me because now I don't know if I'm going to be clicking on this to navigate there or I'm clicking on this and it's going to pop open some sort of menu. The change in opacity on this icon when I hover over this area of the cell is confusing uh, or confusing my expectation. So let's try it. I click here. Okay, it navigated me there. Now what happens if I not click on the dot, dot, dot on a different cell? It navigates me there and opens the the menu. So now it's doing two things at once. So I just wonder if there's ways in this world where the dot 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 is an action that has its own you know hover interaction, or I could click on it straight from here to restore, although maybe in this case you don't actually want that. So the, the other way to approach this would be you navigate first, and once you've navigated, then the dots appear. Because you can't even do anything from these dots without having gone there first. So, okay. Uh, what else? One thing that we talked about um, separately uh, outside of um, this Notion document was this idea of creating icons for documents. So right now, if you have a bunch of documents, these are my starred and these are uh, collections. And here you can see nested documents. There's this idea that this document icon could actually be custom, pretty similar to Notion, right? You can add a custom icon for every document. And I can see how that would be really useful. So I spent some time thinking about that idea. I spent some time thinking about this problem of, of nested sub actions within a row. How could we maybe even tighten up the sidebar hierarchy a little bit more? A couple things to point out here. The first is that this section header for collections uses the same text style as a collection itself, or even as a sub document. If I expand this, like this has the same text as this and same with starred. These things, it's not actually super intuitive that they are section headers uh, on their own. So I wanted to play with that as well. And then where I spent perhaps the most time and will have, I'm guessing the least useful artifact for, for us is poking at the home page. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about this idea of using key lines uh, as a way to improve the visuals on screens like this. So one thing that is really, um, not really, but could be improved here, uh, opportunity for improvement, is thinking about how we can use key lines to distinguish dis uh, different items in a list based on some property. If you look at this list of recently viewed documents, the metadata for when it was created, what collection it's in, when it was viewed, even whether it's been starred or not, like a very personal action, they're all over the place. They're different on every single cell. So this list is actually feels very hard to scan aside from the title. And that's because the title at least starts in the same spot. But everything else, right? Like you really have to pay attention and read. This is you published versus you updated. Um, viewed is over here, can get lost. Viewed is here and could appear. Stars bounce around, but stars also feel like the title. Uh, these big pinned blocks, 
they're fine. I took a visual pass at like, what would it look like if they weren't blocks for reasons like, you know, you just have some awkward clipping here of the timestamps. Uh, it feels a little bit heavy, although I'm not sure the, the colored background is kind of nice once you build a color system for your collections. Anyways, let's jump into the Figma. We're at 10 minutes. So I just want to spend a couple minutes walking through what I did. So let's start with the sidebar. Here's the way it exists today. What I ended up doing in this redesign was just making some small uh, visual alignment changes, but I also poked at a couple of organizational changes as well that might make this more clear. So the first thing is I split apart the organization switcher and my personal account switcher. I noticed here, this is a little confusing because my organization name is the same as my name, but it's weird to me that those are combined into one cell. And when I go to a place like settings, I actually land on my account settings, not the team settings, even though the title of this entry point is the team name. Same thing down here, this settings takes me to my account settings. Uh, so I got a little bit confused. So I was like, why don't we split those apart? Let's have an org switcher here, or at least that drop down, not a switcher, just that drop down to view the org uh, to maybe deep link you straight to org settings. And then people stuff down here. So your profile, this might open a uh, drop down menu with log out, account settings, billing, that kind of stuff. Uh, what else? I poked at, so let me give you an example of some keyline stuff. Oh, interesting. I have to show the UI to, to show rulers. This gets a little bit gnarly. Um, really, really tight UI, but I just wanted to show how I tried to use key lines to like build a clear hierarchy. You're actually doing this pretty well in your sidebar today, uh, but there's a few pixel nudges around that I think make this feel a little bit more uh, visually consistent as you drill down into a, a deeply nested collection. The other thing you'll notice is different text styles for uh, section headings. You could imagine if you hover over this section, maybe you get like a little drop down over here to collapse that section entirely instead of just having it feel exactly like a document or collection text. Uh, and then the last thing was I just did a quick mock-up of like, imagine you're hovering over a disparate action like collapse and expand. It could have its own little button style like this, disconnected from navigating to that particular document. So that's just one idea for how that could work. Okay, so then the home screen is, again, I just want to call out, this is like a one or two hour exploration. I don't have the full context here. I'm going to get a bunch of things wrong, but I played. The main thing I played with was key lines on these document items and just seeing if there's a different way to represent pinned uh, that didn't require these big chunky blocks that basically constrained, you know, what kind of content you could put in there, or at least something that didn't quite feel like a document, whereas these are all documents. So here's where I landed. <sighs> I'm looking at this now and it's bad, but I'm out of time. So here's what I did. We have the new sidebar. We have home, new document up in, up in this sticky header. Uh, we have a section for pinned and we have a section for everything else. The thing that I don't like and I would spend more time on is this still feels pretty floaty. This section feels floaty and this section feels floaty. I'm not quite sure the solution yet. But again, one thing I want to point out was some interesting work we can do with key lines. So one is getting all of our text left aligned so that I can very easily scan. I played with bringing color in, matching from our, our collection icons over here. It feels a little bit rainbowy. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, the product today, it's all this just bold but light gray text. I wondered if just making the collection name get that color treatment might help here. The other thing that I did was explored this idea that starring is very different from taking action on a document itself. So like in this case, um, well, let me rephrase that. Uh, starring should hang outside of the document. So rather than being embedded within the title where it's actually hard to scan and see which uh, uh, documents I've starred, what if that was like a separate piece of metadata outside of the document title 
something that I can more easily scan. So that could look like this. I can scan up and down this row and the starred things really clearly jump out. I even tried, you know, let's use a different color um, instead of using that same uh, black icon that's used everywhere else in the app. What else? Uh, I played with putting uh, avatars here to see who's viewing a document, pulling the task list out into a consistent row again. Um, here it can kind of get lost among all the metadata to see a task progress there. And then another thing I poked at was just this hover state and making it really clear when sub elements within the overall document sort of hover state are interactive. So going back to that point of what if you could customize the, the document icon, in this case, it's this alert emoji, you'd have a clear bounding box for what that is. Drag and drop exists outside of navigating or doing modifying the document. This is just reordering. Um, yeah, so this isn't perfect. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing to share, but maybe there's some interesting ideas that make it a, that, you know, if we just put these side by side, like, is there anything we can, we can learn here about something that makes this a little bit easier to scan or ways to, to use key lines, like along this starring or with the documents icons, uh, or, you know, putting meta data, like the task progress or viewers, uh, in a column so that it's really easy to scan this thing vertically. So that's it. We're at 16 minutes. This is the longer uh, of, of my Loom videos, but I hope it was useful and we can uh, address follow-up questions later. Thanks.